What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. In today's video I will show you a cool prototype unit that might be very very useful for powered up users. This is Keybrick 1. Keybrick 1 has a live Kickstarter campaign which expires soon. You can check the details by clicking on the link in the top right corner or in the description. As you see it came in this simple cardboard box. This is a prototype review unit, so the final product might be different. Let's see what's inside. Here is a charging cable, the unit itself and some screws and magnets. Yes, magnets, more about them in a second. Now let's take a closer look at the Keybrick 1 unit itself and let me explain the purpose. This is a rechargeable battery for the AAA powered up hub, also known as the City Hub. It has a 3D printed case, but the print is actually very fine and detailed, not the regular cheap 3D printed type. Here is the hub and the regular battery insert that comes with it. As you see the form factor is very similar, actually the dimensions will be exactly the same once it is inserted in place. As you know the AAA hub is much smaller and lighter than the Technic hub, well if you use Keybrick 1 then your model will become even lighter. The unit is only 48 grams and the standard LEGO battery holder with the 6 batteries is 90 grams, that's a significant difference. Now let's assemble the battery box. Here's a small annoyance, I got slotted screws instead of the Philips ones that is used in the LEGO piece, so I had to find another screwdriver, but as I was informed the final units will have a similar Philips screw. You can see that the dimensions are exactly the same when assembled. You can use Keybrick 1 just like the regular powered up hub. There's a micro USB port on the unit. You can use the cable from the box to charge it. This is how charging looks like. The final version will be also capable to run while it is charging, so you will be able to power your builds with a power bank. There is a status LED on the unit that gives you information about the battery level and also the mode. What are these modes? Similar to Boovies, Keybrick 1 also offers different power modes with different voltage levels. But there's no button on the unit to switch between them, so how is it possible? This is where our magnets become important. There is a magnetic switch in the unit and you can use the provided magnets to switch between the modes. Green stands for echo, green red is normal and red is boost. I'm sure you want to know the numbers. The unit provides 6.3 volts in echo. 7.8 volts in normal and 9.3 volts in boost mode. Here is a close up of the magnets. According to the designer, in the final version you will get a magnetic keychain that is much more convenient to use. Now let's see a quick speed comparison with the regular rechargeable batteries from IKEA that I always use. I have this orange version of the 42109 rally car that I used in a previous video. It has the AAA powered up hub inside instead of the Technic one. Here you can see the speed with the rechargeable AAA batteries, fully charged. Now this is the speed with Keybrick 1 in Echo, Normal and Boost modes. Let's compare now the IKEA batteries with the Normal and Boost modes of Keybrick 1. As you see, despite the lower nominal voltage, the fully charged AAA batteries make the car pretty fast. I will show you the reason in a minute. Just for fun, let's see the performance with Boovie's Normal, Fast and Ludicrous modes. And this is the speed difference of Keybrick 1's normal and boost modes and Boovie's fast and ludicrous. Now let's charge everything again and do a test with the Crocodile locomotive. Here you can see why the rechargeable batteries had surprisingly good performance when they are fully charged. Despite the 1.2V label, the batteries are around 1.4V at 100% and the full pack is at 8.4V. The Crocodile locomotive is driven by the Technic large motor and I attached the city train to it. I created a simple tool with the Spike Prime ultrasound sensor that will be used to measure the time it takes for the train to go around the track. The plan is to start the train fully charged, then wait until it stops and measure two things, how long can it run and how the speed changes during this time. This setup is not ideal for the locomotive as it struggles a bit to pull the other train, I wanted it to have a higher load since the city train by itself can easily run for more than two hours and this way the test could take forever. So here are the statistics for the rechargeable batteries. The quick and dirty code was not the best and the sensor picked up a lot of false values, but the top values are the accurate ones. As you can see it ran for a bit more than one and a half hours and the nine second laps were gradually climbing to 11-12 seconds and at the end it was slowing down significantly, only crawling and then stopped. Now let's swap the batteries with Keybrick 1 and see the performance in normal mode. Interestingly, the total runtime was a bit shorter, only 1 hour and 20 minutes. The speed, however, was pretty constant all the time, 20 second loops from start to the end. 
This is a big advantage of Keybrick 1, it keeps a constant output level and then simply stops. For comparison I also tried Boovies with an adapter. It was set to normal mode and the results are very similar to Keybrick 1, it also had 20 second loops and then it stopped after 50 minutes. This is not a brand new unit so the runtime might be altered by the age. I wanted to do another test to see how this voltage drop affects performance. I tried to come up with different methods that can be automated for the rally car, that's why you see the sensor at the front. At the end I had to do it manually, so it had to climb this slope again and again for 5 minutes and we can see how fast it was. With the rechargeable batteries you can see that at the beginning it is pretty confident, runs with a decent speed over and over again, but it gets slower with every minute. The pattern is similar to what we saw with the train and the voltage drops to a level where it cannot climb the slope anymore. It will still run fine on flat surface, but it becomes slower and slower with use. If you try the same with Keybrick 1 in normal mode, it starts a bit slower since the voltage is lower, but the performance is kept at the same level for 5 minutes easily. You can even switch to boost mode after that and have a better performance until the battery runs flat. So, let's sum it up. Keybrick 1 gives you a rechargeable battery option for the AAA powered up hub. It can be recharged without taking the insert out. You can even charge it while running and there's no any custom software to use as you only change the battery and not the hub itself. It's great to have different speed modes. You won't see the performance of Boovies' ludicrous mode, but 9.3 volts will give you more than the rechargeable or alkaline battery options. Changing speed modes with the magnet is a bit weird first, but if you get used to it, it works pretty well. The price is obviously higher than a set of alkaline or even rechargeable batteries, but you get actually more for your money. My main concern is actually the hub where it can be used, since the AAA powered up hub only has two ports and it kind of limits the usage options. It can be good for trains running on display, or you can put it in simple cars with only two motors for drive and steering. I really wish it was available for the Technic Hub as well, perhaps with a successful first campaign we can encourage the developer to make Keybrick 2 for the Technic Hub. Check out the Kickstarter campaign on the link above or in the description, support the project if you think you could use it in your builds, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my technic reviews and other LEGO RC videos. See you next time, bye bye!